What's up everybody? It's Carlos from Daily Carry Solutions here at the CRKT booth with Eric from the Outer Limitless YouTube channel and my buddy Bryce from Blade Show 2021. So uh, Bryce, I gotta tell you, uh, everything that I've seen in the catalogs from CRKT has been awesome. I got a couple of really cool things that I have caught my eye here. Yep. And you've been nice enough to go ahead and take out a few designs for us to go ahead and take a look at. Um, why don't we go ahead and start with, uh, with the, he's over here to the left. Sure, so the Provoke came out a couple years ago. Um, it's the karambit that really solves a lot of the shortcomings of traditional karambits. Most karambits are gonna fold over your hand and require you to kind of move your hand out of the way or use some sort of pocket catch. What the Provoke does using our kinematic arms is deploy the blade out the back, keeping you safe. It's also a way that you can have the knife in your hand non-deployed and not escalate until you need to. Came out this a couple years ago, um, meant for professional use. And this year, we've actually introduced a Provoke Compact. So uh, this one's a little bit more EDC friendly. Um, the original one fills out your hand and your pocket a little bit more. But this new one is about 25% slimmer, lost about 20% of the weight. Wow, okay. So a little bit more EDC friendly. It looks like it functions the same way as the large with the lock. Exactly. Uh, disengaging it and, and deploying it. Now, is this currently out or is this something that's uh, slated to hit stores soon? We just released it uh, this week. came out earlier this week. This was probably one of the first places that many of the knife fans could get their hands on it. Um, but they'll be available at anywhere you like to buy knives uh, soon. But it's got all the features of the original. Same way it folds up, really simply. It's got the same great pocket clip. Uh, lays flat until you need it. Press right there and it raises up so you can get it over your pants material. But it really lets it ride a lot lower too than a traditional karambit, which will generally show the ring. So this looks like a standard knife in your pocket instead of a karambit, which is a really nice feature too. Awesome, okay, nice Bryce. So um, moving on to the next design, um, uh, what kind of uh, caught my eye on this is that you mentioned that there's something unique about this lock. Yeah, so lock back might be one of the most common locks in the knife world. Definitely. Um, and a lot of innovation has gone into it over the years. A lot of our um, local American knife makers have really put a lot of innovation into this. And what we've done now with Ken Steigerwald is he's actually been able to move the button up forward using what we're calling a front lock. So normally with a lock back, you're gonna have a spring in the back applying the upward pressure to the lock bar. But we actually use integral springs built into the frame. So these two frames, if you were to take the scale off, you'd see the two arms applying the upward pressure. What that really allowed us to do is move the button forward. So it makes it much easier to get at one-handed. Normally with the lock back, you're gonna have to take your hand and redress all the way to the back here. So it just kind of modernizes the lock back and obviously the addition of a pocket clip. This is the Kova. We also have the smaller Kith. So both sort of traditional American folders, uh, modernized though with our new front lock. And I think it's a really cool innovation, you know, Amazing that we can still innovate on one of the oldest locks that we've been seeing for years. I think that's one way of being able to bring the, the traditional lockback design to you know the new age and for, for new people getting started. Uh, and something to kind of bring up a conversation with you know grandpa and his totally. original lockback. So it's nice uh, to be able to go ahead and bring that full circle that way. Totally. So, so yeah, it looks just like grandpa's old folder that you get and you covet the same one, yeah. Awesome. So, so I don't think that we could have gone through this video without a box design. Of so, course. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about this one. This was the uh, the Pi Large 3. It's a Pilar 3. There we go. We got the Pilar, <laughs> the Pilarge, and this one's kind of like the Pilar pointy. There the we Pilarger? go. <laughs> I don't know. However you want to talk about it. It's the first Pilar with IKBS ball bearings around the pivot, so it's a real treat to open. You can back flick it all day. It's got D2 steel on this one model specifically um, with a stonewashed blade and quite a bit pointier. The, the original Pilar was designed after a English uh, sailor's knife. So it didn't have the points so when you're rocking and rolling, you don't accidentally poke somebody. But in this case, it makes it a little bit EDC friendly. You got more of a point to it. Nice little copper backspacer sort of signifies this is one with D2 steel. But really simple, that front finger choil. I think the Pilar has become one of the pillars in the knife word Definitely. world. I like, uh, I like what you did there. I know. I, uh, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. I'll, I'll come up with better <laughs> language next time. But it is, you know, and I, I think it deserves all the credit it gets. It's so comfortable. Great little beater of a knife. And you have great control. And I think you still see that in the Pilar 3. And now, even smoother drop shot action. And very flickable. It's nice to see a new iteration of this because of the fact that, you know, I, I do know friends who had the knives and they're like, wow, this is great. But I would like to see this but I would like to see this. And I think that you guys really, really hit the nail on the head with this one, so. We're listening to you. If you're making comments, we're reading them. We're trying to make you what you want. That's what we're here for in the end, so. <laughs> I was really excited about this one as well. This has become quickly one of my daily carries. 
So very excited about that. Gotta love Vox. So uh, the minimalist design. Yes. Um, I know a lot of people that aren't necessarily fixed blade guys that are very heavy into folders and it's unanimous that people look at the minimalist design, they pick it up and they like it. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think is really cool because it helps fold people that are, are traditionally into folding knives transition into you know fixed blades. Even though it's not a very big fixed blade, yeah. it, get, it seems to get the job done and it's great for everyday carry if you choose to EDC a fixed blade. Definitely. So, um, I see that you have a blackout version right here in the cleaver. Yeah, so this is a cleaver we came out with last year, really fun. What's really interesting about the Minimalist is gonna be the three finger choil handle. It actually came from a waste piece of steel. Alan Foltz had a piece of steel in his, uh, in his workshop, had three holes drilled in it, and you can usually see it, if you hold two Minimalists up like this, you can see the three holes. <laughs> so you cut it in half, made two knives, and then through a process of elimination, we come up with the Minimalist, which is one of our strongest categories and probably the neck knife in the industry. Definitely. So, no, and at the price point, I mean, it's very, very hard to beat. Totally. And you know, it, we've made them in all sorts of different shapes, Tontos, uh, Bowies, we had a Karambit style, and uh, we have this little cleaver one, which I like to kind of refer to as sort of a reinforced worn cliff too. When people ask me, what's the point? You're like, ah, it's a reinforced worn cliff and it's cool. <laughs> Definitely. You know? Well, so. at the end of the day, you know, people want something that speaks to them and is useful. So it's nice to be able to go ahead and incorporate those two aesthetics into this. So, blade shapes. They, uh, there's the cleaver and then there's this guy right here. Is this new? Brand new. Okay. This Just is really, really something. I mean, tell me a little bit about this one. Sure. So, Alan actually, we have him on camera saying this is his favorite shape of the Minimalist, which is pretty cool. And his reasoning being the way that the blade shape works. When you get up towards the tip there, it really thins out. You can see how you could do a lot of really good detail work with that, good scraping. You have plenty of belly with usable space there. And if you'll notice towards the back end of it, there's a slight recurve that really wants to draw the cut towards that back end. If you're doing any pull cuts or draw cuts right through it, it'll naturally want to go to that place where you're really going to have that cutting power. Um, also a new cool addition, you got a little bit of a thumb ramp with the jimping there. That's something new we've seen for minimalists. Usually they're a little bit more flat, so it gives you a really solid oh, yeah, register. You feel that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, still in the same sort of neck knife sheath uh, that's known for, that's what the Minimalist is, and uh, still comes in that way. So, really excited. Excited to have Alan Fultz's favorite shape too. Very nice. Yeah, he's such a cool guy. We're so lucky to work with all our designers, and, and Alan's been running around here. I haven't seen him for a little bit, but. Yeah, I have seen him around the show, and it's hard to, to pin him down, but it's yeah. nice to see Spot some of his, uh, his blades represented over here. Definitely. So, moving on to this guy right here. Tell so, me a little bit about him. We're talking about knife designers. You gotta talk about Ken Onion. Oh yeah. The man. So Ken Onion has been working with us for quite a while now. This is the Bonafide, and it's featuring our field strip Gen 2. Which many of your viewers are probably familiar with our Gen uh, Gen 1 field strip. We've really simplified the whole process here. So I'll show you how this comes apart real simply. We have this one toggle lever here in the front. Just push it into that position. That scale comes right off. And the whole knife comes apart wow. for disassembly. And you can get in there, clean it out. It's got sand or just kind of the lint that builds up naturally. We also made a couple other improvements. We actually pressed in the IKBS ball bearings this time so you won't be losing your washers. And what that really did is it gave it just a really smooth drop shut action. It's just a really smooth opener. Putting back together is just a simple scale or knife on the back scale, front scale on, lever back down, you're back in business. That's the easiest way to disassemble a knife. No little Torx wrenches, no little screws to get lost. Just a very simple way to disassemble and, uh, and a really cool Ken Onion design too. I really like the Bonafide Slim. It's got that sort of Ken, you can just tell when it's a Ken Onion blade with the curves you see on there in the front. Um, we release this in two models. You have this one, you have an OD green with a full flat grind on the blade. So, really excited about that. Field Strip Gen 2, I think it's a really big improvement. I do too, and I think in an age where you get a lot of knives that are being built and designed today and marketed with you know, proprietary screws, or even if it's just your standard Torx bits, it's hard enough to be able to go ahead and have to field strip a knife when you're out if you've been using it really hard. And with something like this where you have no tools, you can just go ahead and take it down clean it, wash it off, put it back together, and then really deep clean it when you get home. Yeah. I think that that's a great design. I'm glad you guys went in with the Gen 2. I think that's a really unique way to be able to go ahead and disassemble the knife. Uh, I mean, it, it, it looks like it's uh, it's foolproof, to be yeah. honest. Uh, maybe even I could do it. <laughs> so, yeah. that being said, thank you so much for showing that off, and of thank you for, for checking out, I mean, all of these with us here at Blade Show 2021. Bryce, you've been great. 
thank you so much for, for showing off uh, the CRK stuff here. Uh, excuse, excuse me. The CRKT stuff here at uh, Blade Show 2021. Yeah. No, thank you guys. Thanks for having us. Check us out. Keep looking, tuning into both channels and uh, check us out on CRKT.com. Thank you so much.